Catherine Crick is not only a false apostle, she actually condemns people for demanding her teachings line up with scripture. Anointed ministers of God, when we see exposed videos, every single time, it's scripture, 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 scripture. Twisted, 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 twisted. Every single time. They do, they do exactly what the Pharisees did. But we're gonna talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God hollow because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, and welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K-Dub, and today we're going to talk about Catherine Crick. Now, Catherine Crick is a deliverance minister. You may have seen her going viral for some of the most fakest, uh, I mean, <laughs> Daniel Adams-esque deliverance ministry, but even more so. Uh, well, she recent. oh, also this, she is a self-proclaimed apostle, right? She claims to be an apostle, right? So... You don't need to see the Lord because, um, you know, you can see the Lord spiritually. So that counts as still seeing the Lord. So th that's literally her argument for why she can be an apostle, which that would mean every Christian can be an apostle. But nevertheless, um, she recently did a sermon where she is uh, teaching people how to hear from God. And my friend, I'd rather buy a, a used car from a cricket salesman. You'd be, you'd be actually more safer buying that car that you know the engine doesn't work and you know he's scamming you than listening to Catherine Crick uh, advice on how to hear from God. We're going to start here. Let's hear her. Uh, this is kind of just show you how bad her explanation and eisegesis is. Uh, she has no nuance. And what we're going to hear from her is just scripture twisting after scripture twisting after heresy and then more scripture twisting and so we're, we're going to be playing uh <laughs> we're going to be playing this a lot you know no, 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 no. and so let's get into our first clip just to show you uh, she doesn't know what she's talking about when it comes to the bible um uh, so let's get into our first clip here it says in John no, 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 no. was <laughs> sorry i'm going to play all of this I, I, it's it's 50 seconds long I am not going to interrupt her once during this. It's going to be a temptation because it is very bad. But this is her explanation of John 1. Let's, let's hear her out. In John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word or the Bible is God. One of the biggest ways to hear God and to have intimacy with him is by reading his word. But not reading his word any old way. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. Specifically, how to really be able to hear his voice in his word. And not just read it and get nothing out of it. Or hear something completely different than what he means. Because that's completely possible and that's really prevalent in the body of Christ today. Okay. Because uh, I'm going to play that back here in a second. So she says she, 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 get, she, says, she says true things, right? You want to hear from God? Go to the Bible. But she said, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was, and the word was God. Amen. And she says, and the word, and, and the word was, or the Bible is God. Well, so if she... If she takes one John 1 to be the Bible, then she would have to conclude that the Bible literally is eternal. So you had pages of scripture um, being flipped to, you know, you had, you, you, hey, you could go to John 1, 1 in eternity. You know, you can flip to that passage or not us, but God himself. The passage in John 1 isn't speaking of the Bible. It's speaking of Jesus Christ. He is God. That's the person who that's who's being talked about. Not 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 the pages of scripture. And I hold the I hold the Bible to a high esteem, but the Bible is not God. It's God's revelation. You know, so you have to nuance there because when you're when you're holding up your Bible, where's my Bible? Hold on, hold on stand by. <laughs> I got a Bible here. When you're when you're holding up your Bible, you are not holding God up. Right. You are not dissecting do God, you know, in, in that kind of some kind of physical sense. Um, so I thought her explanation there was just just silly. But that's the kind of explanations you get with Catherine Craig. They're they're sophomoric. They're bad. And yeah, so that's our first clip. Well, we get to this issue 
of scripture. Um, and though it sounds like right there, she has a high regard for scripture. I mean, she literally called scripture God. It sounds sounds good, right? <laughs> Well, she, you're going to actually find out that she really does not have a high regard for scripture. That's going to be very prevalent. You know, it's useful if it helps her promulgate her teachings and it pr prompts her up if she can do that. But we're going to see real clear. That's not the case. But let's get into this next clip. It also means you have to get out all other bad motives like I'm reading the word of God because I'm I want to be really intellectual and knowledgeable in the word of God so I can look spiritually impressive to others. It also means you have to uh, surrender the bad motive, get rid of the bad motive of, I want to look in scripture and find verses that will back up my theology. Uh, yeah, you should do that. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with searching the scriptures to find what is true to support your theology. I mean, the Bereans literally did that to test Paul, right? Acts 17, uh, they were delving into the scriptures. Matter of fact, Paul called them more noble for doing that. Oh, yo, you need to just take it for what it is. They searched the scriptures, Acts 17, to uh, back up the theology that was being preached. Now, she's going to go on to call that demonic, which shows you how off base she is. Uh, but don't just listen to me tell you. Let Catherine Crick tell you. I really, hallelujah. Why I really want to be able to prove that I'm right on this subject. I've got this one scripture. Now I'm on a hunt to find others. But notice she is, she kind of makes it seem, assume like you're doing it pridefully as if that can't be done, you know, just, you know, humbly just, Hey, for, for, for what it is, she assumes all, like you can kind of tell she's kind of mocking and mimicking. Okay. That's fine. Uh, she assumes that, hey, if you're doing that, you must be doing it arrogantly, right? A lot of people, a lot of people are doing, do that, right? That's that spirit of religion again. That <laughs> What's the spirit of religion? Searching the scriptures to see if your theology is true. You see how that's actually demonic what she's preaching, but she's going to present it as if you're doing it, you're the one that's demonic. You see how backwards that is? It's that devil coming it's, as an angel of light. It's the devil. Again, the Bible says that the devil masquerades himself as an angel of light, meaning the devil can come sounding like God, sounding spiritual. Like this, it, I, I would agree. That's exactly what's happening in the pulpit. So if you're wanting to prove your theology, you, hey, you're wanting to back it up, you, you're actually, or you're even testing others, Catherine Crick says that's demonic. And you know what I have to say to that? I have to say this. Jingle bells, jingle bells, I'm not going to hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, we 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 love to go to the Bible. You know what? We'll, 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 we love to go to the pages of Scripture. We'll even do this. Take you to the Greek. We'll take you to the Greek, Catherine Crick, because we want to be accurate when we handle the, the word of God. We don't want to be sloppy and just go on preaching whatever last night's pizza we had last night. Right. Just because we had a thought. Right. We we heard that from God, which is kind of what you're going to kind of hear uh, coming up. But let's get to this next clip here. We better humble ourselves when it comes to our uh, confidence in our interpretation of scripture. We better not be jumping to be teachers of the word, even leading Bible studies, even leading small Bible studies. We better not be jumping there too fast. And God says, God warns about this. The teachers will be judged uh, uh, more, like higher standard. Now, the irony in this is she's actually guilty of what she's telling others not to do, which is kind of the log and the speck in the eye kind of thing going on. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it's me. But half the time when I'm listening to Catherine Creek uh, and just just kind of pay me no mind right here, but think about it later. It sounds like she's kind of thinking about all this and just making it up as she goes along. Um, but but let's keep going. So he says, don't be quick to be teachers. And the word of God, it says that. Mm -hmm. And, and now you're starting to realize, I think, what I'm sharing, why it's so serious. You could be hearing from the devil and teaching the devil's, what the devil wants through his word like he did with the Pharisees. And that's really serious. And that's what we got. We have that happening throughout today um, when we see um, false accusations coming towards anointed ministers of God, when we see exposed videos every single time. 
It's scripture, 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 scripture. Twisted, 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 twisted. Yeah. How dare you guys criticize uh, Catherine Crick for twisting scripture and demanding that she actually present scripture or you yourselves are presenting scripture for why she's wrong. She kind of mocks that idea. You know, every time it's scripture, 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 twisted scripture, this it's well, yeah, it's quite important. It's it's funny. You just got done reading about James, about not many of you becoming uh, uh, teachers. Why? Because James point is because many do not know how to accurately handle the word of God. And then you mock the very thing in the next breath. I, I, what, 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 what's going on here, you know? Wait a minute. Who are you? Boy, ain't no way, boy. Like, boy, ain't no way, boy. Let's finish this out. Every single time. They do, they do exactly what the Pharisees did. Uh, the Pharisees were not the ones, uh, scripture, scripture, scripture. They were a tradition, tradition, tradition. They were opposing the scripture it's what jesus was correcting them so much but th so so now we're being accused of being pharisaical for demanding scripture for for accurate wanting people to accurately handle god's word right we, we, yeah the pharisees were very known for that right no they weren't you, you see how far off from actually what bible is she reading i mean you know the, the bible that she said was just a second was god what, what what is she reading you know what's going on here they prove the Pharisees were on a hunt. The Bible says that the Pharisees would look to see where Jesus was going to, if Jesus was going to go against the law. Yeah, they wanted to entrap them by their traditions. As Jesus called them out for this. He, the, the Corban rule. They had a law where literally they, they uh, created a tradition so they wouldn't have to take care of their parents. They created so much uh, extra biblical doctrines and interpret that and read that in light of the Bible. You have a lot of people that do the same thing, and I'm going to demonstrate how she's the one that's actually guilty of being more pharisaical than those who actually want her to, you know, be in line with scripture. Uh, <laughs> so, so wild here. They were on a hunt. Oh, I can add this scripture to my exposed teaching. That's what happens today. So you got to be aware of this and yeah, not she, quick to listen to just. So she's Jesus in the model, right? And we're, everybody else is the Pharisees. <laughs> Irony. Anybody. Because it's as serious as the devil could be giving them their doctrine. Twisting the scripture. Yeah, that's exactly what we see. You know, the, the irony in this issue is uh, you might be thinking, isn't she twisting scripture by her actually preaching and exerting authority over man? Well, yeah, I would agree, right? How does she get over the whole women pastors issues? Well, here's how she gets over one of them. She appeals to a popular person you may know, and I thought it was funny, but I'll let you listen to it. The spirit of religion has come and kept God's will from going forth in the body of Christ, kept the leadership he wants to be there, the, the, the equippers that he wants to be there because of these specific verses that have been twisted by the spirit of religion. One of them has to do with women preaching and leading, being in a place of, of ministry, leadership. And there is a really well-known pastor who has a huge, one of the biggest churches, I believe, in America. Now, we'll get to that verse here in a, let it, in, in a second. She's gonna return back, but, but notice the pastor who we should be kind of uh, following his lead, right? <laughs> I know scripture says what it says, but this pastor once believed that it was wrong for women pastors, but now he's capitulated to women pastors. So he, I want you to think, who might that name be? This may, It's a, a stalwart of biblical Christianity, a name we all respected. And obviously I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but let's hear who she says. Corn. And hold on, because I, I missed that name there. He, one of the biggest churches, I believe, in America, Rick Warren. Rick Warren, yeah, Rick Warren, the uh, Rick Warren, the same Rick Warren who tried to merge some kind of Christianity and Islam together. Yeah, that 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 Chris Lom, that that Rick Warren. <laughs> the, yeah, the Rick Warren who, who who who's teaching a quasi prosperity gospel. Yeah, that Rick Warren. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't care if he capitulated. What does that got to do with me? What does that got to do with the Bible? Right? I don't care what he says. I don't care that he flip flopped. Give me the Bible. But we're going to get to that in a second. But notice more of this gushing of Rick Warren. 
And he believed for a long time this wrong religious revelation of scripture about women, that they shouldn't uh, be pastors, be in leadership. He believed that for, for many, many, many years while he was leading hu a huge churches, a huge church. And recently, God opened up his eyes and he publicly came out and said, I was wrong. And now I've gotten the real revelation from the Holy Spirit of this scripture. Yeah, so the scripture, it says what it says, but now I got the real, real download. I got the real revelation of what it means because the Spirit spoke to me, right? So, so what it says, yeah, appeal to me. So notice this is the appeal to me, right? Mm -hmm. But we'll go more on, you know, uh, Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Life has created more uh, prosperity gospel pe pe pre uh, preachers and, and people than Joel Osteen's Every Day's a Friday, right? Uh, my goodness. And he apologized. He apologized to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. Praise God for that beautiful humility, you know, so, so, so others' eyes could open up. But so, yeah, so he, he literally realized I was flat out wrong about this and I had been teaching this and by teaching this has been keeping um, anointed women of God from being able to lead and preach and teach. Um, so that's a really serious deal, you know? And, 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 and what that speaks to me is if a, if a pastor of a big church with a good heart you know, um, if he can be wrong about scripture, what about you? So, you know, uh, big church. So therefore, right, he changes theology. So therefore, you could be wrong, too. Well, why does not work the other way? Why doesn't it work the other way? Like he has a big church and a good heart. He could still be wrong today. Right. With that logic, I, I, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, logic isn't a strong one with this uh, Catherine Crick. But we're going to get into some of those texts here in a second on women pastors. Uh, but let's listen to this because she's going to continue gushing over Rick Warren as well. But we're, we're going to get she's because she says we're going to we need more more of this. So check this out. Hallelujah. And as you read the word of God, another thing that happens is God brings rhema revelation, rhema, a new present tense word of God through the Holy Spirit. It's actually not what rhema means. Uh, it's, 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 uh, uh, this is this new kind of, cause she makes, I know charismatics have made this word to mean like this new outside of scripture, uh, revelation. And then you got, you know, revelation from scripture. And then you got rhema word. That's something outside of scripture. That's that's not used in the way in the Bible. So don't fall for that lie. Right. Sometimes through the Holy Spirit coming through a teacher, bring, bringing more, uh, bringing more. So one verse says this, but then there can be more that God adds on for more understanding. So we're not limited to the, to the Bible, but God expands. Everything aligns. It's coming from the word. It's not isolated, some random teaching. It must align with the word. But God wants to bring more. God wants to bring meat. God wants to bring mysteries. God wants to bring secrets of the kingdom. That comes by taking the limits off of him and allowing him to expand upon scripture, bring revelation upon scripture that aligns with scripture. Religious spirit doesn't like that. Beware of that. <laughs> Religious spirit doesn't like that. They always will say, but it's not in the word of God. Holy Spirit is still speaking today. Now, you know, that actually doesn't answer the question. I, I, I agree the spirit is still speaking, but he's speaking through scripture, not something new outside of the Bible. Matter of fact, we have explicit command for us not to go beyond scripture. Uh, matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 4, verse 6, it says, I have applied all these things to myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, that you may learn by us not to go beyond what is written, that none of you may be puffed up in favor of one against another. So even the Paul, Paul himself and a leader in the church, Apollos, submitted themselves to scripture. And this was to be an example to others of what to follow. Uh, 
now she she kind of she kind of mocks this idea again mocks the idea of people you know demanding bible demand i mean how dare we you know how dare we you know because you know the position is hey if you don't believe god is speaking you're limiting god right because she, she wants to make this it's, it's this weird dichotomy she's making about like you know everything is lining up with the bible but god is still speaking outside of the bible well if god is giving new things then how would you test actually if it lined up with the bible since it would be new because if it was saying exactly what the bible said then it would be it just be it just be reiterating scripture. So I, I I never I never get this dichotomy that people want to make uh, about well I'm you know the 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 revelation God's given me isn't contradicting the Bible. It's lining up with it. Well, if it's lining up, just give me the Bible. You know, we'll get to that in a second. He's still speaking. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing. We can't shut off his voice here and now today, and only just read the Bible, and that's it. We notice we can't just be getting this from the Bible. We can't just be reading the Bible. We'll, we'll, we'll return this in a second. We need his voice to breathe upon the word and bring more. More. There's more to him. There's more to his kingdom. There's more understanding that he wants to release. Amen. So we need more than the scripture is her argument. You know, I remember uh, this. There's a, a book uh, called Jesus Calling. You might have uh, heard of it. And this is kind of a similar thing. I, I'm not sure if she got that from that. I'm not accusing her of that. But there's a very similar argument that she made um, where she was saying, hey, I, uh, I was reading the Bible and I just wanted more. Right. Let me just tell you this. A person who is not satisfied by God's word and they want more than the scriptures is a person that is about to create their own religion. You know, Joseph Smith wanted more than scripture. You know, uh, lots of cults start because they want more than scripture. But let me give you a verse which shows this issue. My friend, scripture is the, is the most sure thing you will read. Second Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 16, it says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths, <laughs> like Catherine Crick, when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son. So uh, Peter is talking about uh, when uh, the the when G when Jesus was being spoken to by the Father right on the mountain, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from uh, born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. Wow! So so Peter. The apostles got to experience God speaking from heaven. Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't you want to be there to hear that? Wouldn't that be such a, like, man, the, the highest pinnacle of your life, right? But notice what Peter says. He says, uh, and we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. Confirm. Peter's presupposition is the scriptures are, is a more confirmed word than God speaking from heaven. Is that your view of the Bible? Is that your view? Notice that we have a more fully confirmed. Some 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 versions say we have a more sure word. Wow. To which you would do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place. Right. The, the word of God illuminates until the day dawns and this morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy come. No prophecy of scripture comes from one's own interpretation. Someone's own interpretation for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The scriptures is God's doing ultimately, you know, and so um, there was there was some point I was going to go on about that. Maybe I'll, I'll remember here in a second. Um, but but yeah, let me play this next clip. Let's get into it, because. When the angel of light or other people try to say, this is what the scripture means, you can say, no, that's not God's heart. God would never say that. God would never mean that by that scripture. Oh, so she's created this theology that essentially says, you know, you, you, you view God, you create this version of God who says God would never do that. And then when the Bible says something you don't like or someone teaches something that you don't like, uh, she'll say, well, that that verse can't mean that because I know God to be this way. That, that's how many people get around the view of hell. Right. I create a God who's all loving, no holiness, no wrath, no justice. Right. So when the Bible teaches uh, hell, you say, well, God would never do that. Right. Because he's all loving. You see, you don't you don't actually create 
an ideology and then you read that in light of scripture, you allow the Bible to come, uh, uh, inform uh, your theology. But this is this is what she's done. So so now God would never not, not allow women pastors. Right. Because my God is, uh, you know, has no roles. He's egalitarian. Right. So this this is what some people do to get around uh, what the Bible teaches. That's the most important part of being able to hear God's voice in the word. And that's one of the big reasons why you need this anointed leadership, a spiritual father, a spiritual mother. like. Oh, and she, she goes on to make this point as well, that in order to know the Bible correctly, you need somebody else to, to um, not, not just teach you, but really to tell you, because otherwise you'd be lost. Now, there's a bit of kernel of truth in that. You need discipleship. But the, but the spirit is in you just like it is in me if you're a believer. And so you're not dependent upon me, but the, there needs to be a discipleship process that happens. But I'm not more right because, you know, I'm an apostle or I, don't, someone don't, don't clip that. I'm not an apostle, but you get the point I'm making because that's the point she tries to make. But, the, but again, in Acts 17, that's not the position that they took. They actually challenged the apostle and get did the, Paul, the apostle Paul say, hey, what are y'all going doing? He said, no. They are actually uh, more they, they, they were more noble because they challenged and tested Paul's teaching. Um, but but this is not actually biblical and accurate what she's talking about. Paul, because he's saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Yeah. He says it multiple times. This is New Testament, not old. This is New Testament. So that means that that's, that's how it should be today. I should say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. <laughs> no, but see, you notice this? She's, because Paul said this, therefore I'm saying this. But remember, she's created this theology that says, hey, you need to listen to your leaders in the sense of, I need to be the one telling you what to believe, right? You know, and God speaking to me the same way Paul, he was speaking to Paul, right? Paul's getting divine revelation, right? He's painting scripture. What does that lead you to the conclusion that Catherine or yeah, Catherine Crick is getting, you know, God speaking to her in that same manner. Right. Uh, obviously, we reject that. But you, you see kind of the 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 authority she's trying to get herself. But she's actually going to establish more into this. And, and, and this is just having this is just having to do with what I just shared about. There is a special grace and anointing and revelation given to fivefold ministers to to spiritual fathers and mothers so she has more grace more more wisdom more knowledge than the rest of you guys so that's why y'all need to listen to her right so you see she sets herself up at, in a, as a position to where she actually can't be critiqued and if you critique her you're actually opposing god you see how how convoluted this is um yeah she's uh slinging her her alleged authority around to understand god in a higher level apart from scripture might add because remember she mocked going deeper and knowledgeable in scripture right that's all prideful pharisaical demonic stuff right no this is all god you know downloading speaking giving downloads to her uh, apart from scripture so that and, and that means also that they're going to be more transformed into the image of god than their students, their disciples, right? So they're going to be looking more like God. So, so for you, it's for you to look and see, oh, that's what humility looks like. Um, being a leader is no, uh, I guess, it's no uh, default that you're going to be actually the more uh, holy, holier one in the audience. You may know more. But it's just because you're the leader doesn't mean you're actually uh, more sanctified is what I'm trying to get at. And so but you're going to return to this issue of uh, Rick Warren. And so we'll, we'll visit it here again. All right. So we're going to get into now I'm going to give you I'm going to we're going to walk through uh, seemingly contradictory scriptures right now. All right. Oh, actually, this is where she. Yeah, she's going to address the uh, seemingly contradictory scriptures. So let's let's uh, see what she has to say. <laughs> Some of you are going to have some questions answered today. Hallelujah. So let's get into the first one. Should women preach or be in places of leadership like pastor? 
Well, we look in scripture for this. So let's, let's look at scripture. 1 Corinthians 14, 34, it says, Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful, disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. 2 Timothy 2, verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. So, um, but then we have... Now, she's going to list some verses, but she actually actually doesn't explain all the verses. She doesn't explain those verses. Her paradigm is this. Well, we have more scriptures that says something good about women, so therefore women can preach. That's essentially what she's going to go on to say. I mean, she's going to just list women that none of the pastors, pa we're going to uh, listen to her saying some, none of the pastors actually say women are pastors or can preach over men. But she interprets that, remember, because her, her theology is uh, God would never do that, right? But let's look at this passage in 1 Corinthians, because she actually doesn't read the, uh, the verse prior, which actually helps you understand uh, what it's saying. Because her, her whole issue is, well, that's just for that day, right? We, we've heard, you've, heard, you've heard that argument before. Women in that day could not preach, but the Bible actually goes further than that. Uh, let's look at the first Corinthians 13, uh, 14 passage, uh, starting at verse 30, 30, 33, because uh, she's like, hey, it was just for that woman in that singular church. Well, you got to explain this part. It says, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches. So, so it's not just one church, one woman, all the churches, women were to do this. And the context is... Um, uh, preaching if you go back it's talking about uh, pre uh, preaching this is the uh, uh, authority of the church it's the uh, order of the church mm -hmm. a matter of fact she said second timothy but she meant first timothy chapter 2 let's start actually at uh, verse 11 it says let a woman let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness i do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man rather she is to remain quiet now if you actually read on, Paul actually explains this. Is it just because of some issue in the church? Paul grounds his reasoning not in some controversy, but rather from creation. Notice what he says, verse 13. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. So why women, why men um, are to have authority and women aren't to be pastors? It's creational. It's, uh, it's, it's rooted in creation. Adam was formed first. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. So that's the second re reason and and became a tra transgressor, transgressor. Right. And so she she skips over all that. Right. Because that actually solves her argument that that actually goes further. Right. Uh, and, and we're going to see how later it actually contradicts some things she's going to say. But uh, well, let, let's leave her. Let's read her. Oh, the Bible says something positive about women. Therefore, they can be pastors argument. But then, but then let's keep going. Let's not stop there. A lot of people like to stop there. But let's keep going and look at other scriptures. Oh, let, let me say this, because that's those these aren't the only two verses in the Bible that talks about women, men being pastors. Matter of fact, you know, you have zero uh, qualifications for women to be pastors. Matter of fact, in Titus two, you have men being uh, uh, Titus one, Titus two. Uh, you have men being called to be the elders of the church and women are only called to teach other women and children, never to exert their authority over a man in the context of especially in the context of the local church now i know this is i know this is upsetting to our egalitarian society where right uh i'm a woman i can do what i want right i don't need no man boss chick all that kind of stuff right but the bible does not support this teaching of women pastors very clearly you know there's not one verse there is not one woman pastor in the bible there is not one qualification for a woman pastor you got to wrestle with that if you're pro-woman pastor. But let, let, we'll, we'll let her finish her argument. We find Miriam, a prophetess of the Lord, a true a prophetess <laughs> in Exodus 15, verse 20. We find Deborah, a prophetess and a judge pastor. in Judges 4, verse 4. We find Anna, the prophetess in the New Testament, Luke 2, verse 36. We find Priscilla, the teacher, in Acts chapter 18, verse 26. None of these and are pastors. And Phoebe, a minister, one of the five full ministers, Romans 16, verse 1. 
and she actually delivers the great epistle to the Romans. She was sent by Paul to deliver and essentially speak and teach the epistle to the Romans. Now, she added that part in there because it didn't say anything about that. She was not speaking and teaching uh, in the in a pastoral context. Women can, women can uh, share biblical truths, but the pastoral office is only reserved for men. And, and let me even go further than that. It's only reserved for qualified men. Not any men. There are a lot of men who need to get down too, right? So it's not just any man. Well, she's going to get into some responses to these issues. Let's let's get to our next point. We have two scriptures that say that women should not speak or preach. Now, she's saying there's only two. Absolutely not. Uh, there, there, there are multiple. Matter of fact, the Bible assumes that the authority of the man would be over over, over the woman. Um, but but let's let's let me grant her that. Let me grant her that there are only two. Now she's about to create a contradiction because she's saying, yeah, there's only two that actually teach there are women pastors, but there's multiple. She's actually created a contradiction. I don't know why she. Well, it's Catherine Craig. That's a lot of things I don't understand about her. Or, or be, be in leadership position, basically. And we have I don't know how many that say that women should preach, should lead. There are none. She presented none that actually stated that they could be pastors. She's actually shifting the goalposts. Well, hey, this woman was a, a, a prophetess, a judge. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter three that a woman leading is a woman leading and children leading are a sign of judgment because there's no man fit to lead. It's a sign of judgment. So so going to all these passages actually doesn't prove your point. It proves my point. Many more. Isn't that kind of, just let's just stop there. Isn't that wild? No. The doctrine that's been more prevalent, the wrong doctrine that, that when you think about it, I'm just having this revelation right now. That's crazy. <laughs> Goodness. So she's God just speaking to her. Now. She just got that revelation. God didn't tell you that, man. You, you, you know, you know what we tell you? No, 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 no. Prophesy. 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 You, you, uh, Lily Java might have told you that, but not God. Right? No. There's so many more that show. So, so this is what. So, this is what. What you need to do when you when you look at these scriptures and you're like, okay, this is weird. They like contradict each other. It seems like you need to first um, look at God's heart. Have that open heart. Well, it really looks like God wants to use women, according to all these other scriptures, and according to the God that I know, His heart. So, when you see a a, a theology that contradicts what you believe. Just look at God's character, you know, the one you've already formed for yourself. And you're like, and then look at these other verses that say God's using women. Yeah, of course God's using women, but not in the context of the local pastor. God uses women to be wives, to be mothers, right? To be uh, women and, 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 and children ministry, but never in the context of a pastor. That's the issue. Again, this isn't about oppressive to being oppressive to women. This is actually believing what God has said, right? You know, that's at the end of it. This is this is why she don't want scripture, scripture, scripture. You, you kind of see why. That's why I'm saying when you read scripture, uh, ask yourself, what is God's heart? No, don't ask yourself that. Ask, what does the Bible say? Because we get God's heart from scripture, not some kind of outside of authority. Right. This revelation we're getting. Also, ask yourself this. Is, would God make up these random rules that don't really make sense? Random rules like uh, creation. <laughs> uh, God gave me the reason, you know. Now it doesn't make sense to you because you, I, yeah, I would, I would, I, I totally understand why someone in your position doesn't believe they make sense. That's because you're doing the very thing God said not to do. This is the same thing LGBT people say. You know, why would God not want me to be have love? Well, it's because you're redefining love in a way God's never said to do. You know, sinners always want to, say, you know, say, hey, it doesn't make sense why God would not like what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, because you're trying to present yourself as God. And that's what people don't realize is what you're believing when you believe these scriptures that contradict God's character. So if we believe <laughs> what first first Timothy two says, if we believe first Corinthians 14, we're denying God's character. My goodness. I mean, it's like you're making the argument for me. God's not out there to make up. It does not make sense for God to prohibit half of his children from taking down the devil and being vessels of him. And Let me say this. 
One, you don't have to be a pastor to do that. There's many faithful men and women who are not pastors who are still working against the kingdom of darkness. And let me go even further. God has a permitted more than half. Remember, not every man is to be a pastor. So this just because, again, this is the issue of like, hey, if you're in this pastor role, you're more important. No, you're not. You, you are a, a, a sinner needing to be saved. You are a justified sinner, just like the rest of all of us. Right. You're 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 no better. Um, so, yeah. Making the kingdom of God to go forth. It doesn't make sense. And also, like, use common sense. It's not like it's scientifically um, proven that women are not as smart as men or something. It's, it's not. It's I'm not sure Catherine wants to be the one making the argument. But no, this is an issue of intellectual uh, intellectuality. I, no, I'm not arguing. Men are more smart. Therefore, we need to be pastors. This is just what the Bible says. I mean, come on, Catherine. It's not like it's scientifically proven that women cannot lead and be in places of leadership and authority. Women can do all sorts of things the Bible says not to do. I mean, I don't see the point. Society makes it seem that way, but that's what society has done. And society is so egalitarian. I mean, we have a woman vice president for crying out loud. I mean, I mean no, society is not complementarian or patriarchal even for that matter, uh, where they're saying only men should lead. No, they're, they've given up this. I mean, BLM you know, is led by two women who are pushing against all this. So, no, women are not uh, <laughs> being oppressed in society and uh, this patriarchal complementarian society. But when God gets in the picture, God can break all of the demonic walls of that society is brought. This is demonic. You know, and give the ability to women to be able to lead and walk in authority just as he wants them to, you know, like... God says, I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over a man. Catherine Craig says, God can give the woman ability to teach and exercise authority over a man. You see how she directly contradicts the scripture? Use common sense. <laughs> it does not make sense at all why God would not want women to teach to be in places of leadership. Right? Amen. Okay, so that, so that will help you so much without you even need, needing to know the context. So you already probably can come to the right conclusion and hear God's true voice with just what I've shared with you. Amen? Before you even read the passage, before you get any context of the matter, just, just repeat verbatim what she said and you'll be okay, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. And maybe you're like, I don't understand why the scriptures say that, but all I know is God's heart. So I don't have to know everything, understand everything, but... This is my conclusion from the Holy Spirit, that God does want women to preach and lead and teach. Amen? Yeah, so the, the Holy Spirit is telling her this, right? I mean, you, you guys see how, I, now you see why she doesn't want scripture to reign supreme over this issues. Uh, but again, again, we're going to keep addressing this woman pastors, at least for one more clip. Let's let's check this out. Order in the church. And so now he's addressing women and women at that time were being disorderly because of the culture that was going on in that days that was influencing them. I never get why people want to use this argument. They say, hey, women at that time were um, were just acting out. They were rebelling. Therefore, Paul said, don't have them teach. And to that, I say they still are. So according to that logic. <laughs> They still should be pastoring, right? You know, no. Paul actually grounds his argument in creation, not cultural. But she wants to make it just a cultural issue and not creational. Also, women were not educated very well at that time. <laughs> Shots fired at all the women who were holding it down in that day. She pretty much says women weren't called a pastor back then because they were idiots. I mean, is that the argument? Paul presents in any of this text? No, it's an issue of authority. <laughs> she, she just called those ladies dumb, man. I mean, uh, I'm like, I'm like this. Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Why, why would you say that? They had a lot of questions, more questions than the men would, because of the culture in that time. Also, um, the Jewish culture that still would have been, they still would have, wouldn't have been completely out of it, probably, yet. You know, it was a gradual thing. But in the Jewish culture, men would sit on one side, women would sit on the other side. When women had their periods, they were unclean in the Jewish customs. Now, they were free from that now. They didn't believe that anymore. But they were still sitting on opposite sides. So women had these questions. They were uneducated. At the same time, they were being rebellious and 
influenced by the culture, and they were speaking out loud questions to their husbands across the aisle. And it literally says, ask your husbands at home. It was dealing with women in the congregation. It wasn't addressing women in leadership. I mean, pastor is a leadership position, and that's the context of these passages in the local church. Um, so, Amen. So that <laughs> is the context of that scripture. It was Paul speaking to the people at that time because of what was going on at that time time it was not meant to be for all women forever so essentially he's saying hey it, it was just for that time hey these these passages don't apply anymore so hey um you know you know anyone quoting them is just quoting a historical debate that was just at that time but again we've already established we've already proven how it wasn't just for that time it was for all time you know and so uh I put LOL on this clip. Let's see what I got here. <laughs> also, we know that women should be in leadership, that God wants them to be five-fold ministers because the list that I just went through where I listed prophet, prophetesses in old... And by the way, uh, there is no five-fold ministry. Uh, <laughs> New Testament, because of teachers that we see in the New Testament, because of even apostles, woman, it speaks of in the New Testament, because of the woman at the well, and I mean, and, and the Mary Magdalene, I mean, that was a place of leadership. The, the Mary, uh, Mary Magdalene was telling all of the men, I saw Jesus. <laughs> that's why I see why I put LOL now. So apparently that's a, a proof text of a woman can be a pastor, right? If, if a woman said they saw Jesus in that day, hey, that means she could be a pastor. Uh, that is quite silly and asinine. Um, but this time she moves on to the issue of apostles. So, you know, Catherine Creek believes she's an apostle. She believes hey, anybody can, or, or, she, or she believes she's an apostle. And, you know, the qualification of seeing a, 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 or being apostle is seeing the resurrected Jesus listen how she gets around this what i mean it wasn't like i mean when when paul uh saw jesus it was jesus rebuking him for persecuting him through the disciples murdering his disciples so he shut his eyes it wasn't like he really even got to see much he shut his eyes and then he said go to my servant and he'll tell you what to do so this a servant opened up his eyes a, a, a minister an apostle opened up his eyes god used an apostle to open up his eyes well, it wasn't an apostle. It was someone that God told Paul to uh, go to to open his eyes. A a Ananias. He wasn't an apostle. Nowhere does it say that. And then he began ministering shortly after that. So a lot of people have this doctrine that they, they think that apostles are being prideful or something. Like, you didn't see Jesus. You I don't think it's a matter of being prideful. It's a matter of what the text says. No, people think that, but... Paul's saying, I saw Jesus, but the real meaning is I saw spiritually. No, that's not what it meant. Uh, <laughs> he literally saw Jesus. Uh, Jesus appeared to him. I, 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 like our eyes to see, uh, we're, it's based on faith. God, our, our belief and our faith is ba it's not based on sight. Amen. It's based on spiritual sight. That's faith. So, um, Apostles must be called by Jesus, and they see Jesus in the spiritual realm, and God calls them. Sometimes that can come through a prophet prophesying, but they've seen Jesus through. So she's saying, hey, yeah, to, to get around this whole seeing thing, you know, you see spiritually, right? Because faith is seeing by, you know, spiritual eyes. So therefore, if you want to be an apostle, you don't have to really see physically, even though, you know, Acts, that's how they chose in Acts. Uh, no, all you got to do is spiritually see. You know, that's a great way to get around what, <laughs> how they chose in Acts uh, chapter one. That encounter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is, this is the great wisdom, the great exegesis and great, uh, you know, download from heaven, Catherine Crick. So then we can hear God's voice and conclude that apostles, God is using them today and will continue to use them. And that the requirements are that they are truly called by Jesus and have seen him in the spiritual realm. The requirement isn't having to see him physically. That may happen sometimes, but that's not a requirement. 
Amen. So, so you can kind of see this trend with her. It doesn't matter what the text says. She, she has her presupposition. She has her beliefs. And she'll import that over the text mm-hmm. or into the text to get the all, all required outcome she wants. Remember, her, her theology is you look at the character of God, right? you know, the one she makes up, and then you import that into all these difficult passages. Again, mark and avoid Catherine Crick. She is not a true apostle. She's a false apostle. She's a false teacher. She should not be in the pulpit. And you see how easily she will twist scripture to come to whatever she wants. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope it was educational. To the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below.